Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Here to do a new problem as part of the GoMath 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to do number 22 on the CBEST Elementary Math Practice Test. I'm going to read it over, and as I go through the problem, I'm going to work through some strategies that I think you can use on your elementary math teacher certification exams. Okay, so let's look at this. It's number 22. At the beginning of a classroom period, half of the class half of the students in the class go to the library. Later in the period, half of the remaining students go to the computer lab. If there are eight students remaining in the class, how many students were originally in the class? And I want you to read that over to yourself. Read this over, very carefully uh, visualize what's going on in the problem. We have here uh, a class, a class, classroom of students. And that really, this class and this classroom of students is our central image. So to help me sort of make this classroom uh, very concrete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a unit square. And this unit square is going to, this unit square is going to represent 100% of the students that we're working with. So I'll say uh, one class is equal to 100% of students. Or I could be like the original class is equal to 100% of the students. Now in the beginning of the class period half the students go to the library. So let me cut this out. And this half, this portion, half of them, you know, go to the library. Okay. And I could think about that. If I think about this original class as being X amount of students, an unknown amount of students, what I could say is that whatever this original amount is, X amount of students, half of them go to the library, which means half of them remained. So ha the rest of them, the other half are still here. Now out of that other half, later on in the period, half of those students go to the computer lab. So I could take that group here and I'm like, oh, well, out of the ones that remained, or out of the ones that remained from here, half of them, another half of them, go to the computer lab. Okay, so that's like saying, out of this remaining amount of students, half of those went to the computer lab. And what we're left with is eight students. So, when we take our, our, our original amount, our X or 100% of our students, we take half of that, and then we take another half of that, we get eight. Now with the model drawing, I could work out how to solve this, the answer through the model drawing by, by being like, if this is eight, then the half that went to the com computer lab must have been eight, and this would be eight plus eight is 16, and that was half of the, the students that uh, remained, the other half went to the library, so that would have meant that this group here would have been 16. So in total, 16 plus 16 would have been a total of uh, 32 students. Or I could solve it algebraically. It'd be like x times a half times a half equals 8, while a half times a half would be 1 fourth. So I could rewrite this if I wanted to reorganize it. I could rewrite this as 1 fourth x equals 8 and uh, I could to get rid of that 1 fourth I could multiply by the reciprocal now would be 4 over 1 and I do that to both sides 4 over 1 to both sides multiply it now the reciprocals cancel each other out why how does that happen because the 4's cancel out with the 4's and we have here what's left over is just 1x or just x and 8 times 4 over 1 is the same as 32 Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm reading through the question. I'm visualizing what's going on. I'm drawing a model drawing to help organize the work. And the model drawing itself, and I'll just go back to the model drawing because that's really the strategy that I want you to carry away with. 
this model drawing itself sort of helps me get to the fact that this is 8, so this must have been 8, so this must have been 16, oh, so all together it all must have been 32. The model drawing helps me organize the work. This equation here is another way of thinking about it, and yes, it also helps me get to the correct answer. And it's just a second way of doing the problem, solving the problem. Both are really good. So it would be really good if you could take this word problem and solve it with a model drawing or solve it with an algebraic equation because they're both kind of, you know, uh, they're both very much connected. Okay? All right, team. But the answer here is D. There's 32 students in this classroom. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Chris Abram from GoMath. Have a great day. Take care.